any Linux distribution needs a way to install and update its software. There are many different approaches that can be used in order to manage software. Red Hat Enterprise Linux uses a package-based model. The idea is that software is assembled into individual packages, and those packages can be updated, downloaded, installed as a unit on the system. This has a number of advantages over, say, an image-based solution where you download an entire image of a core piece of the operating system. It tracks which version of which package is installed. It tracks what software packages have been installed and what packages installed which files. This makes it easier to update those packages, to uninstall them and remove all the files they put in place, to make sure that any dependencies those packages have have been appropriately met. In other words, if that software requires some particular version of another piece of software, we can ensure that that is also installed on the system. And this package-based model makes it a lot easier to manage those dependencies. Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Fedora and a number of other distributions use a particular implementation of package management called RPM package management. This is based around um, a special archive format called RPM package files. An RPM package file consists of three main pieces. A archive of the files to be installed, both the executables and any data files or documentation that might be needed. Any scripts that should be run when the package, package is installed or uninstalled. And information about the package, metadata, things like the name, release, and version of the package, what other packages it needs to work, any packages it might conflict with on the system, and so on. The idea is that these package files are just like zip archives in that you can download it as a file to the system. It's easy to move from one system to another. Once it's there, you can use a command to unpack it. And then that archive file can go away because it's been unpacked and the installed files are already on the system. Now, before we look at how we install and update and remove packages, let's take a quick look at how we name packages and how we keep track of which packages are newer than others. RPM packages have a standard naming and versioning format. If we were to look at the file name, the file name reflect uh, for a particular RPM package, that file name reflects the name and version and release of the package. So we divide, divide up the name into several components. The first part of the RPM file name is its name. In the example here, HTTPD tools is the name of the package. So if we were trying to install the package by name, that's probably how we would refer to it. Then there's a version string. It comes in two basic parts, version and release. The first part, version, reflects the upstream community version of the software that we're installing. So if I were to go to the Apache HTTPD site and find the software that was used to make HTTPD tools, their 2.4.6 release is what was used to build this RPM package. Then the release part of the version is which update of this RPM package is this. In other words, it might be that the first time the 2.4.6 package was put together um, worked fine and was distributed, but then we found that there needed to be some enhancements made, or we wanted to fix some bugs that were found after release, or there were other packaging changes that want, we wanted to make, maybe to add some optional components that weren't originally shipped. In that case, we'd increase the release version of the package, indicating this is a newer package, but the version would still be the same because it would still reflect the original upstream version of this software. How do we know if one version of a package is newer than another? Well, if first we look at the name. If the name of the package is the same as another package, then it's the same software. The one with the higher version is going to be the newer package. If both packages have the same version, then the one with the higher release will be a newer package and will update the older one. So how do we get RPM updates? Well, let's think of what we have to do. We need some way to download these updates from wherever they're distributed from, and then we'll need to install them. We might also need to update any dependencies that that package would have. With Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we have a tool that does both, 
Yum, that both downloads packages and help us, helps us manage, install, and update them. These packages are provided from a repository on the network, and Yum needs to be configured to know how to find them, what mechanisms to use to reach that repository of packages that can download them. These can be downloaded from our content distribution network through Red Hat Customer Portal. This requires that the machine has internet access. Optionally, you can set up an add-on service, Red Hat Satellite Server, at your organization, which can be a local set of those pack of packages for a number of different versions of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, that satellite server can be used to manage your subscriptions, manage multiple systems. You can actually do a lot of advanced things in terms of monitoring your systems with that tool. Either way, the way we would configure an individual server to get official updates is similar, and that's what we'll look at in a moment. There's a third way you can get packages, and that's to get them from supplementary sources through what are called um, standard YUM repositories. And these are configured by text files that you place in a particular location in the Etsy directory and generally are downloaded using normal HTTP protocol connections to a web server. We won't talk about that in as much depth here. So let's take a quick look at the commands that it takes to set up a Red Hat Enterprise Linux system to get official updates from the content distribution network. The first thing we have to do is to set up that machine with a valid subscription for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And there's a simple command line tool called Subscription Manager that can be used to do this. Let's take a look at, the sh at, at my prompt here. Before I subscribe to the system, I'm going to need to log in as root. Let me run Subscription Manager Register to contact the Red Hat servers and download a subscription. It wants my customer portal username and its password. I have to type that password right as well. This will take a moment. And the system has been registered and has a valid subscription associated with it. Actually, I should say it's been registered to get the valid subscription. I need to attach the subscription next. That's the next step, Subscription Manager Attach. This will actually apply the subscription. It will guess what the most likely subscription is if I have multiple possible options. This will take just a moment. And once that completes, I, it'll tell me what it's been subscribed to. Um, in this case, it's um, the attach process picked the standard Red Hat Enterprise Linux server channel. The next step is to see which YUM repositories this automatically configured or didn't or made available to me to configure so that I can get software packages. So I can use the YUM repo list command to see which repositories were automatically configured by the subscription registration process. Let me do that very quickly here. Now in my case, I'm an employee at Red Hat and my account automatically entitled me to a lot more channels than you'd normally see. A typical server would probably just show up with the RHEL server RPMs repository as a, as a default choice that would be chosen by this process. If I want to disable s some of these extra repositories, I could do that with the yum config manager command. Say dash dash disable and then before the slash here would be the name of the repository that I would want to disable. So if I don't need rel SAP for rel 7 server RPMs here, you can say I want to disable that. And then that particular, it prints out a whole lot of extra output. But that particular repository has now been disabled and I won't get package updates from that particular repository. Now that I've set up updates, I can use the yum command in order to install, update, or remove packages from the system. For example, I could simply run yum update. When I do this, this will attempt to see if my system's fully up to date or not. And if it's not fully up to date, it will install the latest version of the packages, looking at all of those repositories I currently have configured to see which ones are available, um, which one has the newest version of the package available and makes, also makes sure that any dependencies I need that have changed are also downloaded and applied. So it will take a few seconds for this command to run. It'll print out a long list of packages and then 
at the end of that process, I will be asked whether or not I actually want to apply those updates, which in this case, I won't. If I wanted to just install or update a particular package, I could say yum install, and if I know the name of the pa package, specify that package by name. So if I want the ZSH Z shell package installed, I can say yum install ZSH. It will find that package, and if I say yes, download it. Since this is the first time I've done this, it wants to make sure that I have the right keys installed here to validate that these, these packages are really from Red Hat. I will set that up very quickly here. Now that that package is installed. Now anytime I do a package install after this, I won't be asked about those keys again. It will assume those are the correct keys for the system and will use those to va validate any further packages that are downloaded. If I don't want that package anymore, I can simply say yum remove ZSH. And again, it'll show me what will be removed because that package and any of its anything that depends on it will be removed. And it may be that removing that package will also remove something I want to keep, at which point I would abort this command. But I'll go ahead and say yes for my example. Finally, if you're trying to find out what packages are available or which ones are installed, there are some useful yum commands that you might use in that case as well. Yum list will list all of the packages that are installed or available on this system. If I were to type yum list installed, this will only list packages that have been installed on this system. It won't list ones that are available from other repositories that might be configured on this system. If I can't, if I, if I see a package here I'm interested in and I want to know more about it, I can use the yum info command. So I could say yum info zip, for example, and this will print out information about the package, what its current version and release are, which repository this version of the package is coming from, or if it's installed, and detailed information about that software package. Another useful way to find packages by keyword is to use yum search. I can say yum search followed by some keyword, I'll use kernel here, and it will find any package where that matches, where the word kernel matches either in the name of the package or in its short description. That concludes this topic. See you at the next video.